you're the first person I thought of when uh, when I'm like, okay, who can I get to call in to maybe give some thoughts, remembrances uh, of David Stern? When was the first time you ever crossed paths with uh, the commissioner, Charles? I think probably the night before the draft, he might have came by and said hello to us guys. But the first time I ever spent any time, uh, you know, obviously when it's a big deal. You see even today when kids shake the commissioner hands, it's a pretty cool thing. It's, just, it's like you you made it mm-hmm. uh, when you when you walk across that stage and, and you shake the commissioner's hand and and, and it's sport. It's pretty cool. Uh, but obviously, you know, I've been in the NBA for thirty years now, and I've had a lot of opportunities to spend time with Commissioner Stern. Most of it was really really good. Some of it was really really bad when I screwed up. Uh, but I tell people. Other than Magic Johnson, Larry Bird, he's the most important person in NBA history. You know, people forget. You know, you know, Rich. We've been living in the last few years where everything's been perfect and everybody's making a crap load of money. But you know, when he first got to the NBA, the, the average salary was two hundred thousand dollars. Now the average salary is over seven million dollars. Uh, you know, I, you, I'm looking at some of these numbers that. You know, it was a hundred and some million dollar business. Now it's a five point five billion dollar business a year. Uh, and you go back to uh, the Dream Team, all the TV deals, games that's not on tape but lay in anymore. Uh, you can't even put into words what this man meant to the entire NBA legacy. Because, uh, like I say, we've been so profitable and so big for the last thirty years. People forget when he took over. It was considered a, a not a good league, uh, drug infested, too many black guys, and people. Uh, he took over this league and made it what it is today, which is amazing. So when when people talk about David Stern, the first thing that they mention is how he took the platform of the NBA, built it or helped shape it, and then handed it off to the players to be front and center. How did he do that, Charles, as a player that obviously wound up front and center like you? Well, I think the main thing is, you know, we're a little bit different than in the NFL. They always worry about the shield and, uh, you know, they don't want their players to step out. But he made the players, like I say, he, hey, listen, I, I've said this now, and I, Magic Johnson and Larry Bird saved the NBA. They're the two most important players in history. And David maximize, put them in a position, put all us players in a position where we could make the most money. Uh, We make more money than any other athletes anywhere. I mean, you think about that. Uh, We make more money than any other sports franchise uh, players in any other sport. And it's all guaranteed. And we got a, a great revenue sharing model that he came up with. Uh, he was the first guy to come up with drug policies. Uh, you can't put into words uh, what he meant for the NBA. I mean, it's it's pretty uh, amazing. And I came in, in with him my first year in 1984. I, you know, you know, Rich, I got to tell you a funny story. I'm playing for the 76. I'm playing with Dr. J, mm-hmm. Moses Malone, Maurice Cheeks, Andrew Tony. I remember the first time an NBA player made a million dollars. We were walking around high fiving each other. <laughs> I mean, that, that's that's how crazy you know it was. We never thought a guy would be making a million dollars when Magic Johnson signed for twenty five years for twenty five million dollars. Me and Moses, Doctor J, and all those guys, Maurice and Andrew, and we're high fiving each other because we could not believe that an NBA player could actually make a million dollars. And look at where he left the league when he retired, and uh, and just look at it today. And he, I mean, you can sit there and say, "Wow, he did a great job." Great is not a good enough word to describe what this man put all of us in position. To what we got the greatest lives ever today. And then obviously when, when things might have taken a turn, um, he was always front and center as well. And by a turn, you've mentioned Magic a few times. Uh, when Magic uh, left the NBA because uh, he was HIV positive, and the way that Stern handled it, along with his return, you were right there again in the middle of all that. Can you... 
Walk me through how Stern handled everything and some of the issues that he handled in a manner that got the NBA and obviously Magic back together again. You know, I, I don't know all the parameters. I'm not going to act uh, like I was in on those discussions. Uh, just uh, standing up for Magic, because, listen, uh, nobody knew a lot about the AIDS virus back then. A lot of people were stupid. They can, as long as you're in the same room with people or shake their hands, you can catch the virus, which is totally incorrect. And to, to embrace uh, Magic, uh, going back, you know, the All-Star game, the Dream Team, it really took away the stigma of the AIDS virus. And it took somebody of his caliber uh, to, to make that happen. For more of The Rich Eisen Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV for free on BR Live or download The Rich Eisen Show app.